Okay, welcome to the next video in the systems programming video series. We are uh, now moving on. Well, so what? We just finished uh, week four, but because we already completed the reading for week five, then we're simply moving on to the assignment in week five. And so in this assignment, we'll be working with a portable PIX map, PIX for pixel, an image file format that stores the colors of a 2D uh, array of colors. Each color is represented by an RGB triple. Uh, there are, is information in the header of the PPM file. It supports both ASCII, which is plain text, and binary, which is raw data. It's maybe a good idea to switch over and just take a little look at what these things look like. So here's an ASCII version of the file. This is header data. Uh, so the first thing tells you the type, P3 means ASCII, and I think it was P, can I open this? I seem to only have that, but okay. So P6 means binary. So what's going on here, I don't have a, you know, a reader that will let me just directly see, or I do, I could bring it up in the terminal, I suppose. But if we just look at it here, then in this PPM file, it's declared with type P6, which means that the data is stored binary. And in VS Code, it's not, um, there's probably like a VS Code extension that would let me look at the binary information here or something like that, but I'm not gonna bother with it. Uh, just this is this is like, you know, uh, VS Code's uh, standard text editor, not rendering binary uh, in a, in a you know, uh, way that I can read it. So anyway, but we don't need to worry about it. It's not terribly important, especially right now. So anyway, uh, so P6 means that it's going to be uh, in binary. Uh, hash on a line is a comment. It basically should be skipped over. After the type declaration, whatever, there's a line telling you the dimensions by pixels. So this is a four pixel by four pixel uh, data file, right? PPM file or whatever. Uh, it tells you the maximum RGB value. So the maximum RGB is, you're never going to take a, a, an RGB value bigger than 255, or at least it wouldn't make a lot of sense to write a file like that. Um, often if something is bigger than 255, then you just truncate it down to 255, but in any case. And then here's the data, which we can't see in this particular case, but over here, going back to the ASCII file, you can see the data stored in ASCII, right? It's ASCII because we're using uh, characters like spaces and and the numeral uh, uh, the numerals two and five and so on and so that's what makes this an ASCII uh, file. So that's what these PPM files look like. Let's get back to the assignment. So uh, the this image with one two three four uh, columns and one two three four rows is uh, you know like a, a rendering of a PPM file. And here's a PPM file. In fact, I think this is just the, uh, yeah, the one that we just looked at renders like this. So here's a general description of every PPM. So it's got a magic number, P3 for ASCII, P6 for uh, binary. White space followed by a width and height, maximum uh, color value. Well, yeah, by the way, when I said usually the color values get truncated by uh, down to 255, uh, that's a, at least the convention that I've seen in various like uh, previous things where I've had to work with uh, RGB values if the RGB value ever exceeds 255. But, you know, I don't know, maybe PPM works differently. So I shouldn't probably shouldn't uh, promise that if you ever saw an RGB value in a PPM that was bigger than 255 that like all you are supposed to do is truncate it. Uh, maybe that's just uh, what we did when uh, I previously worked with uh, RGB values. A single white space character after the max, so basically the line break, because right, the line break is regarded as one kind of a white space character. Uh, probably a line break. I guess it doesn't technically have to be a, a line break, but that's what it's uh, probably like. I think that's what it was in the example here, right? So separating this 255 from this value zero is a single white space character, which is the line break. Uh, the header information is always in plain text. The only, uh, only the pixel data differs between ASCII and RAW format. Uh, PPM files can be viewed using these tools. Okay, sure. Okay, part one of the project is to implement the read PPM 
uh, function. So for this question, you will implement the read PPM function. Can read PPM files stored in ASCII? So, oh, okay, that's interesting. I, I thought I had to do this for both the binary and the ASCII formats, but apparently I only have to implement the ASCII format, okay. This should take a file name as input, return 2D array of struct pixel. Struct pixel is, you can see it here, but it is also in the read PPM header file. So uh, I'm not, uh, I, I, don't know how much I've really talked before about header files. I mean, I know they've come up briefly when talking about compiling collections of files and modularity and stuff like that. I think I've maybe talked enough about it. I hope. I, I can't remember how much I've already said, and I don't want to repeat myself too much. But basically, the header file tells you which of the functions that you define in the C file, right? So if you look over here at the C file, then I created, just for my own purposes, a picks to string function. But that's a private function. I'm not like, you know, not that I'm jealous about it or anything, but I'm not trying to share it with anyone else or with any of the other scripts within this project. So I'm not declaring that as something that gets imported because I'm only using it within the scope of this part of the program. So you can see that the picks to string function, right? Uh, is it here? No, it's no, it's nowhere in here. So if it's not in the header, then it does not get shared. Okay, so the picks to string function here does not get shared. No other part, right? No, you know, this this thing over here called test ppm cannot use my picks to string uh, function because I did not share it in the header, right? So so part of the point of the header is to declare sort of what can get shared. That's part of the point of the header, okay. But then there's this read PPM function, and that is in the header, right? It has exactly the same return type as what you see over here in the read PPM prototype uh, in the source code. So the header and the source code both show the same prototype for this function read PPM. Uh, the name of the function is the same, it must be, right? That you, you need those to agree. The types of the inputs are declared here, right? So this is a char star. If I come over here, this is also, in fact, they're both declared as const uh, char star. Uh, they don't have, right? Like, so here I call it file name. Well, I mean, it was distributed like this, but you know, so they call it file name. And then over here in the header, they again call it file name. Because they're parameters, you actually, it doesn't matter if you, at least in the, should I claim this for C? I know that in certain other languages, it doesn't matter if the variable name is the same between the header and the source code. But at least here, uh, or sorry, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter, but here they are the same, right? File name there, file name there. I don't know if they actually have to be the same. But anyway, <clears throat> but the types have to be the same. The types are important. So then uh, this is an int star w, which is supposed to store the width of the pixel map. And then this is a integer pointer where uh, pointing to the address in memory, which stores the integer which is the height of the pixel map. So that's also over here in the header as well. So since all of this is declared in the header, especially in the header with the declaration extern, that basically externalizes the function, meaning that this function can get shared with any other files when you build them together. So if we come over here to test PPM, here it calls the read PPM file, which is getting imported from the read PPM header there, and so because it was declared external in the read PPM uh, header, then it is allowed to come over into the source file and learn what the read PPM function is. And I can use it here in the test PPM code. I can already see though that since I'm sharing my earlier implementation, I did a bad thing with my earlier implementation. I should have declared this, saved it into a variable so that I can later free it. In fact, should I just, can I in fact just free this as soon as I call the function? Maybe that's actually all I need to do. But um, in any case, this creates, right, this allocates space for a, a matrix. And it is the job of the user. And in this setting, the concept of the user is the test PPM file, right? The test PPM file is like the user 
calling on this tool created in some other uh, files. So I'm importing that tool using it. So I'm, you know, so in in programming the test PPM, you know, source code, I am the user. And it, it, you know, the way that this is supposed to be designed it is the job of the user to free up memory that was allocated by the read PPM function. So I should remember that when I call the read PPM function, I after it has been called, it is my job over here to free it over here. Right. Some, some that's not always how things are designed. Right. Like you might, you know, sometimes when a function does something, it is like, you know, the job of the person designing the function to take care of certain responsibilities, you know, depending on the design and, and what, you know, uh, has to be done. Some things can be the design, uh, the um, responsibility of the builder, the, the designer, and some things are the responsibility of the user. So anyway, okay. So coming back over here to the read PPM file. Okay, so anyway, so the point that I was basically making is that, uh, what was the point that I was making? Well, in any case, oh, right. Oh, uh, but I did want to point out, right. The, the struct PPM pixel is declared in the header. So it's worth knowing that that's where you find that. Okay, so uh, getting back to the assignment. So that's the struct PPM pixel. The user of the function is responsible for freeing up memory allocations. That's what we were just talking about. You'll reuse this function for the next question. Therefore, we place it in its own file with a header. You may implement your TD array of pixels as either a flat array or an array of arrays. Uh, so this gives us the freedom to design it how we want to design it. Namely, right, like either this could be a pointer where you know, uh, it's, uh, we've seen this before, right? Like, do you want to make a pointer to pointers or do you want to point directly to the, you know, the, the addresses in memory, but then you have to manage your pointers carefully to make sure that you simulate the behavior of a two dimensional array. Well, you know, the harder way is the way that I have gone with here, as I have done before when dealing with 2D arrays, I've gone ahead and just made it a pointer to a PPM pixel, but I'm just gonna manage the memory addresses and the indices and so on, so that it behaves like a 2D array. So, okay, so getting back to this, in the file test PPMC, write a short test that calls your function and prints the contents of the uh, why is this called FIP or something, whatever? But anyway, to, uh, prints this, right? So just uh, we want to print the content of the file. Sure. Okay. Requirements since your function re should return null if the file name is invalid. Your function should return null if the memory cannot be allocated. So rather than exiting with a crash, it will return null. Not sure why you would make that decision, but in any case. Um, your function should return a point, or maybe that's for like, so that when they pass it into like an auto grader, the auto grader can catch null values without the program crashing. Maybe that's why they decided to design it that way. Anyway, uh, your function should return a pointer to the array you created in that. You can assume that it's safe to read the header using fgets. And the first time that I, because I've already implemented this one time before, and I'll show the implementation soon. But when I did, I read it character by character, just, uh, you know, that just seemed at the time to be the easier thing to do. But I think this time around, I'm going to try using fgets and see if that doesn't make the code a little more logical and uh, concise. So we'll see. We can use fscanf to collect triples of RGB values. Oh, and I guess we're using percent %hhu, which I'm not sure what that means. We could look it up, but I don't feel, oh, uh, to read, I guess it must be an unsigned char possibly appropriately allocated or, or designed to catch uh, color values. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Anyway, and don't forget to free your data. Okay. All right. So I think that's, yeah. So the, that's the end of the description of part one. Let's come over and look at the code for part one. So there's this test thing, which is a very simple call to uh, the thing that we write in read PPM. I'll go ahead and comment that out. And then the header, we should not have to edit. So this is exactly how it was distributed when the code was distributed to the class. 
I built this myself, so let's comment that out. And then down here, you can see the, uh, the implementation that I currently have for this uh, uh, function. Oh, right, and that was just printing. Here's a bunch of clearing up data and so on, and that's the end. Okay, so I'm now gonna comment all of this out. And now it's time to start thinking about um, how we're going to implement this thing. So if I'm going to try to do this uh, unlike I did previously, then I'm going to try to read it line by line. First thing I need to do is I need to get access to the file. So I might as well go ahead and say file star FPTR uh, equals F open. Uh, file name, read, and then I want to immediately test to make sure that everything went appropriately. So if something went wrong, if not FPTR, which right would basically just mean that like in some sense it's not there, then return. Okay. Since introducing this assignment was already like what? I, I haven't really kept track of time, but I think this has been like 10 minutes or so. And I don't want these videos to get like horrendously long. So um, maybe let's just test that this is working so far. There's barely anything here, but with all the description of the assignment and then just a very first thing to do here, let's just test that this is fine and then end the video and pick it up again in the next video. So let's uh, simply uh, declare, right. So if you look at the type declarations for uh, for read PPM, uh, it takes a file name together with some addresses for integer memory. And so uh, you would call it like this, uh, for, uh, oops, and uh, yeah, let's just say read PPM, beep, whatever that is, ASCII.PPM, and pass in the addresses for the integers. And that should run now, like it shouldn't print anything, right? I mean, if, if we think about what we should expect to see happen, you know, what is this going to actually do? It's simply going to open the file. In fact, actually, oops, uh, if I open it, I should close it before the end. So let's go ahead and do that. F close, F P T R. And let's also null the pointer. Uh, what does like what will this show in the console? Absolutely nothing because I have not said to print anything. But let's just check that this works. Um, let's just see what happens if I call make. Uh, so we could check the make file and try to understand what it's doing. But basically, it just seems to say to give like oh yeah, uh, crash on one right. Like I think this command, which I actually don't love while I'm developing, so I might want to do something about that. I'm, I'll put it back in later or something, but every time there's a warning, it just does not let the program run. And I don't love that. Oh, actually, I think this is the thing, right? Because I think this is saying like, show all the warnings. And this is saying, if you see a warning, treat it like an error and don't let the program compile which I found somewhat, uh, you know, especially like when I'm just like in the middle of developing and I create a thing, but I never use it because I, ha I haven't finished developing, but I just want to like test it anyway before I go on. And then like, it'll give me this warning that I created a thing that never got used. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I just wanted to test it out uh, at this intermediate stage, but and then it just wouldn't let it happen. I wasn't sure why it was suddenly not letting, like just, you know, treating warnings like errors. And I guess that's right here. So anyway, I might delete that soon, uh, especially if I get a bunch of warnings that I wish it would not hang up on. So anyway, but so when I call make, it compiles with all of these flags and it's worth noticing the very first file that we talk about is test PPM, which is the, you know, kind of, it's the one with the main function. It's the entry point to the program. So that makes good sense, but it also is including the uh, read PPM header file. And we specify the read PPM source code, putting it after the main code or the main uh, file or whatever allows it to be sourced as a kind of a uh, modular source file anyway uh so, so right basically what i'm getting at is when you want to compile files that depend on each other you're starting to see how that goes right here 
because test PPM depends on read PPM. Then we declare that we're going to give the name of the object file. In the object file, we're going to just name test PPM. And therefore, when I want to run it, I run dot slash test PPM. And let's see what happens. Nothing happens, which is great because, I mean, like I said, nothing was supposed to happen and we don't see any errors or warnings. So it looks like, although I did not save my most recent edit, so maybe I should try this again and it still looks good. So there we have it. We are introduced to the program or the project and we have done the very first basic step. And already the video is not a short video. So let's uh, pick this up in the next one.